Hi. The idea of applying augmented reality in television broadcasting has been around for at least a couple of decades. Researchers have been testing its application in all three stages of production, distribution, and consumption. On the consumption side in particular, application of AR is promising. This often consists of using AR to deliver virtual artifacts or extra information in the viewer's environment, potentially enabling the viewer to interact with these artifacts. This can enhance or transform the conventional TV viewing experience. Commercialization of AR devices suggests that this application may gain more traction in the future. However, it is not clear how to design content for this paradigm. What are the parameters that the designers need to consider when creating content for this type of presentation? To answer this, we conduct a systematic literature review and look at peer-reviewed publications in the field. We look at Scopus, ACM Digital Library, and IEEE. We select 42 papers for analysis that describe systems, prototypes, or scenarios that match our criteria. For more information on our methodology, please refer to the paper. We capture the often implicit design decisions in a set of dimensions. These dimensions consist of a set of options that capture the relationships between various elements within content, between content and the world outside, i.e. context, and between various elements within context. Context-related dimensions will be covered in forthcoming publication. The rest I'll explore in more detail in the paper. Today, I will talk about three content level dimensions, abstraction, time, and display, and a content context level dimension, interaction. From a technology point of view, content can be classed in two groups, AR content and TV content. Here, AR content is all media artifacts that are presented using AR technology. TV content is the rest of the media artifacts that already existed prior to adding AR. With this in mind, now we can talk about abstraction. Abstraction captures the relationship between AR content and TV content regarding their contribution to make the overall content meaningful. When thinking about AR content and TV content individually, if they are meaningful and complete independently, then the abstraction is independent. If the completeness of the experience requires both AR and TV components, then abstraction is dependent. If TV content is complete and meaningful on its own, but AR content is used to deliver extra features or to enhance the experience, then the abstraction is additional AR. The reverse of this, where AR content is meaningful and complete on its own, and TV content merely enhances it, is additional TV. We found that most works fit into dependent or additional AR classes. For instance, Revel et al. created a system where children would watch TV content for a few minutes. Then the TV would be paused and the children would be asked to interact with the AR component of the show. Once they captured relevant AR artifacts and threw them back into the TV screen, then the TV content would get resumed. You can see that both AR and TV components are required to make the overall experience complete. In case of additional AR, for instance, Votavo created a system where silhouettes of remote viewers were superimposed on TV content. Here, AR content is adding value. However, without them, the TV content remains complete and meaningful. Another content level dimension is time. It captures the relationship between AR content and TV content regarding their timelines. While asynchronous presentation of AR and TV content may be suitable for experiences that present independent AR and TV components, in most cases, typically, it is desirable to have synchrony between the two components. Naturally, researchers have tried to invent ways to synchronize AR content with TV content. This has resulted in two ways of delivering content in synchronous way, continuous and intermittent. Continuous delivery requires both AR content and TV content to be presented simultaneously to the viewer. For instance, Vatavu silhouettes 
present AR artifacts while the TV content is being presented. On the other hand, Revel et al.'s system required the viewers to go back and forth between TV content and AR content intermittently. The final content level dimension that we will cover today is display. When using AR in the consumption phase of TV broadcast, we found three ways in which content can be displayed. Either both AR and TV content are presented on the same display, or they are presented on separate displays, or the TV is eliminated and AR display is used to display content. In case of same display, for instance, Vatavu's audience silhouettes are superimposed on top of TV content and displayed using the same device. In case of separate displays, an AR device, for instance, a handheld or a head-mounted display can be used to present AR artifacts. For instance, Bailard et al. use both of these to present AR artifacts in the area around the TV screen. TV via AR removes the TV set entirely. There are instances where an AR display is used to present TV content to the viewer in one or more virtual frames. This can be used, for instance, to anchor TV content to a physical location. Another option here is to present content outside any frame. For instance, using chroma keying or volumetric capturing techniques, TV content can be presented in an unframed way and appear to be present in the viewer's environment. Moving on to a content context level dimension, we can talk about interaction. Interaction captures the relationship between the viewer and content. It can be seen as a set of behaviors that enable the viewer to dynamically change an aspect of content. We found that there were three levels of interaction in the works, display level, structure level, and content level. Display level interaction enables the viewer to change the program, resize, reposition, or even change the camera angle. For instance, Bailard et al. created a system where thumbnail images of other programs were displayed next to the TV screen. The viewer could drag a thumbnail and drop it on the TV screen to change the program. The structure level interaction enables the viewer to influence the story path and break away from the linear structure. There are not many examples in our review that aim for this type of interaction, but given the success of programs such as Bandersnatch, it is likely that this level of interaction gains more popularity in the future. Content level interaction is akin to how players interact with game content. It requires direct manipulation of artifacts to achieve a goal. For instance, Revel et al. system, the children are asked to capture words in the written and visual representations and throw them back into the TV screen to resume the TV show. Okay, so we talked about three content level dimensions, abstraction, time, and display. And we talked about the content context level dimension, interaction. Please refer to the paper to see more in-depth explanation with more examples of these and other dimensions. The dimensions and the options they encapsulate can be combined to create unique patterns. For instance, here, I've, I've selected one aspect of each dimension to create a pattern. This pattern provides the parameters of a concept that mixes AR with TV. We can now write a scenario for an AR TV program. For instance, imagine a crime TV series. Between each episode that is broadcast on TV, the viewers can take part in the investigation and search for evidence and clues. The viewers may be asked to go to a specific location in town where a witness claims she has seen a suspect on the night of the incident. They can use the AR displays, for instance, their smartphones, to find and scrutinize the evidence. Once they submit these artifacts, the criminal investigation department in the story world can take over and examine the evidence in the next episode, thus carrying forward the story. In summary, 
we talked about using AR in TV broadcast. We talked about dimensions. We explored a few dimensions in detail. We presented them as a way to create unique patterns, and we used the pattern to create an AR TV concept. This can be a method to explore the design space and to generate guidelines. This framework can help and structure the conceptualization and ideation of AR TV concepts, thus enabling broadcasters and designers to ask the right questions when creating such programs. In the end, I would like to thank my co-authors and the institutions that provided the support for this research to take place. Please contact me for any questions or drop me a line if you'd like to talk or would like to collaborate on topics such as media, TV, or any form of R. Thanks, I'm Pejman Saige, and this has been Augmented Reality and Television Dimensions and Themes.